What I want to do now is give you a behind the scenes look at a web server request process. In other words, I want to take a look at a web page. What exactly happens somewhat behind the scenes? And I have a couple of visuals for you to help explain the process. The first type of process we're going to look at is a static page request. So I'm on my website and within the resources area right here, under servers, I have a static page request slide. So what happens when a static page is requested? Well, the client, which is the browser itself, wherever the browser resides, whether it be on a mobile phone, a tablet, a desktop, even a refrigerator, makes no difference. As long as there's a browser able to access the internet, that is our client environment. So that's our client over here. And you can see I even have an antique client within this area just to show how far computers have come. On the other side of the coin, or possibly on the other side of the world, we have a web server, which is software residing on a computer, waiting and storing pages. It's waiting for page requests in order to show a page. So if we make a request of a website out on the internet, what happens? Well, the web server is waiting for those requests. They come in via HTTP as a protocol, and the web server says, I have a page request, so I will serve it up. So that request comes in from the client to the server. Server sends back a response, and the response is read by the browser and displayed to the user. Very simple. Now that is a static page request. In other words, every time that request is made, the exact same page is getting sent back to the user. Nothing changes on the page. It's always the same. And that tends to be an older type process because a lot of websites now are dealing with a lot of different systems in order to put that page together. But that's a static page request. Let's take a look at a dynamic process. So I actually have this little piece on the right hand side that's been added to our static page request. So our static request is on the left in the blue. What happens in a dynamic request is there's a page created using a server side language and some additional server side coding and the client makes a request of that type of page, and the web server says, wait a minute, I only speak HTML. I have to send this on to somebody else who speaks that language. And that is usually referred to as the application server. Now, the server-side language you use determines if it's truly a full application server or not, but the idea is there's some kind of server-side language piece and there are five languages you can use. That's what these listings are in the pages on the left-hand side. So you can see there's a .cfm, which is Cold Fusion, a .jsp, which is a Java server page. PHP is very common type of uh, file extension. ASP, which is a Windows version, and it's an older Windows server-side language. ASPX, which is known as ASP.NET, or most people just call it .NET page. So those five server-side languages are available. Why do we need a server-side language? Well, first of all, in order to communicate with the database, we have to use them. A web server cannot directly communicate with a database at all. Because of that, we need this additional server-side language what happens is the server-side language communicates with the database based on the information sent back to it. It puts our page together. So in other words, database information comes out, gets sent to the application server that puts the page together. And basically, the application server puts the page together as HTML. Once it's done, then it sends it to the web server, which can send that page directly back to whatever client requested it. So most of the processing is all done at the application server level, and that requires additional coding in one of the server-side languages, 
and also a connection to a database and information stored in the database in order to work with it. The environment we're going to be working in to get familiar with Dreamweaver is a static page request environment. But I wanted to make you aware that there is a fair amount of additional information required in order to begin to work with database information. And you are moving into working with a server-side language in order to do that. But that is a brief overview of what happens behind the scenes when we are working in both static and dynamic web page requests. I think you'll find most of the web pages we request nowadays do require database information. The information on the page changes based on what the information is that we requested on the specific page. But we will be working in a static page request environment in order to get familiar with Dreamweaver. And it's the perfect place to start when working and familiarizing yourself with Dreamweaver and the web in general. So that's an overview of the web page request process and how it works behind the scenes. We don't have to worry too much about that at this point, but I wanted to give you an overview of the process so you have some idea of what's involved behind the scenes in making a page request. Most people don't even think about this until they start working in web pages themselves. So that is the web server environment and a specific page request process.